Hey, this is Tracy Lewis with Stuff and Things. I have a fun card today. I'm going to put this on Fun Fold Friday. It is not quite a fun fold. It is a diorama card. But I really want to get it up there. And I have all the pieces for it. I am going to show you how I did the background with a really fun artistic look to it using Artistry Blooms, which is in the annual catalog. It has an array of brush stroke sheets. I pulled out the ones of interest for this particular uh, task. The backs of these are a crackle, like a softer ombre look, but you can use either side and I will show you how they look. You could even use, there's some that have patterns on them. The color tones that I really need, I'm looking for a sky and water for this particular scene. And I chose, I won't tell you what I chose yet. So this is one possibility of water and sky, envisioning it framed and with some stuff for the scene in front. And on the backs of these are some nice ombre that kind of have the same same color tones you can see here so I was looking at these two for my possibilities for like a sunset and the water and you can see with the sunset you can you know look at all of the lines along the page. Now I've cut these down to six by sixes for storage and so I have to use what's on these six by sixes. If you had the 12 by 12s that just gives you more space to try to figure out uh, what where you want the diorama to be. In fact I would recommend if this interests you to go ahead and cut your frame, the outer frame. I'm doing a double level diorama that really has two frames to give it a more stepped, layered look. So if you get your outside frame, you can place your frame wherever you want, moving around on these pages till you get the perfect look you're after. Since I'm going for a sunset, I also have two different suns cut out to help figure out exactly what I'm after. Once I figure out what I'm after, I use a pencil have a mechanical pencil here and I just outline exactly where I'm going to want my entire frame and that's where I cut on the two pieces and like I said once you have your sky and your water then the rest is really simple you just layer on your die cut pieces and this is what it looks like and I haven't finished it yet that's why I thought I would stop what I was doing show you what my process was and then also figure out where I want my sun to be. So this color here is Melon Mambo and I cut a, a crushed curry in a Melon Mambo. I think where I want to put it is actually right under the happy birthday with just a little bit of the sun. I, I hope you can see the kind of the balance that's happening here that that's why I want it there and I've already attached this paper but I'm hoping I can trim this guy off and then add him tuck him underneath just a little bit so let's see I've cut a small piece because I think I need it to be pretty small and it, he w does tuck under there just perfectly and that finishes my diorama so the fun thing I did was um, I added some twine here over the rope to make it look like real rope. Cut out the two birds. There's also a frog and I didn't want to get it too playful and, and fun. I wanted it to be a little bit more of a serious looking diorama so I left the frog off. What I did is cut the largest frame 
I used two cinnamon cider pieces and then the inside cinnamon cider frame was already cut down to size of, uh, as, as a um, four by five and a quarter. So I'm going to show you now what the back side looks like to have it all fit. It's a little bit smaller. I used the foam strips on all four sides. Luckily, since it's not a shaker, I could go ahead and have there be, you know, a gap here and there. Though, if you don't want your up uh, your top frame to look um, warped, you'll want to as much as you can. Like I actually put in an extra piece here. Uh, this is just to have a nice, solid-looking frame. And then I put elements behind. All the way behind would be the water in the sky. And then the dock I put, I popped it up and put it all the way out overlapping the diorama's inside frame, as well as this uh, little tufts of grass and um, cattails. So that is my completed diorama. I hope that this will inspire you to go, go, go a little crazy and do something fun and different. And let me know what you think about the diorama as a, as a card. Now, I still believe that I can mail this because it, this is as thick as it is. It's a solid piece. I will probably trim down a, one of the mailer pieces that I have. I have a video on the mailers and they're very thin, but I will cut it to fit inside the diorama so it doesn't add any thickness. And I believe that it should fit. In fact, let's do a test right now. I will find my mailing jig and see if it meets the criteria for mailing. I will be right back. All right, I found it. Here is my jig I use for the thickness test for one quarter inch thick. That's a first class stamp, forever stamp. And this is plenty thin to fit and with room for an envelope. So I like that I could, if I wanted, though in this particular case I won't, I could add rhinestones inside or pearls, any kind of uh, embellishments will fit inside my frame and not make it too thick. So I think that there's a lot of good qualities about a diorama to anybody receiving it. It will definitely look like extra work went into making the card. And yet for me, where thickness is such an important aspect of a card so that I can mail it without having to pay a fortune for it, I think a diorama is a great way to go. So that's all I got. Please leave your questions, comments, and suggestions here on the video or over on my blog. I'll have all the supplies on my blog. And thanks for watching.